I guess I must be doing something right, because when one photo of a battle between two iconic pop culture weapons went viral, I was literally inundated with requests to science it. You know that 10% of this show is already about either Wolverine or lightsabers? I checked, but at least I think we can learn something new from this showdown. So, can a lightsaber cut through adamantium? Like many sciencey things, it depends. All right, so this image, apparently viral thanks to 9gag, is the source of the critical question. And I think this debate gets so much traction, firstly because Wolverine's indestructible adamantium claws and the lightsabers of Star Wars are arguably the most iconic pop culture weapons, period. Don't at me. But secondly, these are weapons of extremes. Lightsabers can cut through almost anything, and Wolverine's claws can't be cut by anything other than adamantium. Reconciling these extremes is where we have to start. Super weapons have to be super to be interesting, and so for the curious overthinker like you and me, there's immediately a problem. To pit adamantium versus a lightsaber, we need to de-super both weapons a bit or else we get nowhere and we learn nothing. First of all, a lightsaber can't be just some laser sword. Laser sword, laser sword. Yeah. It needs to be something that can transmit heat effectively, something like a plasma. And second of all, it needs to have some reasonable kind of heat, maybe tens of thousands of degrees, like a plasma cutter that we use in machining or a lightning bolt. To make adamantium more analyzable, we must acknowledge that there is no metal that can only be liquid once. That's like saying that once water is ice, it can never become water again. Nah, in X2, William Stryker says that adamantium is liquid at 15 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so that is our melting point. I know that now this looks like an unfair matchup, something that's tens of thousands of degrees versus something that melts at a little over 1,000 degrees, but this fight could be a lot fairer than you think. Oh, hey look, my, my wrists are fine. Huh. Adamantium could be indestructible in another way, and a lightsaber could be nerfed by thermodynamics. I'm a herder. Though adamantium has a relatively low melting point, it could still have an incredibly high specific heat capacity, or the energy required to raise one gram of something one degree. In a normal metal, the atoms are arranged in a three-dimensional crystalline structure like this, and they're vibrating in all directions, and that motion has energy, or temperature. Now, if you add energy to this structure in the form of, say, heat, those vibrations will increase until the temperature of the solid increases. Just how much energy these structures can store depends on the atoms themselves and their connections between them, and this is the specific heat capacity. So, adamantium could have an abnormally high specific heat capacity if its structure could store energy in ways that aren't common to metals, like rotation or even translation. Then it would take a stupid amount of energy to raise its temperature and get it closer and closer to that melting point. Indestructible. A more realistic lightsaber, on the other hand, may not be able to transfer all that heat energy quickly enough. To give you an example of this problem, Randall Monroe of XKCD once calculated that a bullet passing through a lightning bolt wouldn't even disintegrate. There's not enough time to transfer all of the bolt's immense temperature into the metal. So this is all about whether a plasmatana has enough power to raise the temperature of adamantium quickly enough to melt through it during a battle. Blech. We need some kind of power rating for a lightsaber. The best demonstration of a lightsaber's power output comes from The Phantom Menace, when we see what a lightsaber actually does to metal. When Qui-Gon Jinn plunges his lightsaber into the door like this, he must be melting a lightsaber's worth of material. So, if we assume that Qui-Gon Jinn's lightsaber is maybe a meter long and three centimeters in diameter, and that the blast door has the density, melting point, and specific heat capacity of steel like we use on blast doors on Earth, and that Qui-Gon Jinn's insertion ooh, of his lightsaber blade takes maybe one second, then a lightsaber's power output is at least four megawatts, enough to power a thousand homes. But is that power enough for adamantium? 
If a lightsaber needs to make it through a lightsaber's width of three adamantium claws, and the mass that needs to be gotten through is just a fraction of the 105 pound adamantium skeleton that Wolverine has, and the adamantium has a high specific heat capacity higher than any known substance on Earth, and it has a 1500 degree melting point, but it starts at room temperature, and the contact time is just one tenth of a second because it's a quick swipe, then it would take 35 megawatts of power to get through them. This difference in power means that no, during a slash, a lightsaber would not cut through adamantium. But there's a catch. Even if you bring the specific heat capacity of adamantium down to more realistic levels, there still isn't enough power to melt through that metal that fast. However, if you change the contact time between the lightsaber and the adamantium claws, the power requirement goes down substantially. Boom. Like we calculated, if the contact time between a lightsaber and some adamantium claws are a tenth of a second, then the lightsaber comes into contact and the claws are fine. However, if the contact time increases just to one second, like in the classic locked blade scenario in Star Wars, then, <laughs> oh, the lightsaber goes right through. What this means is that everything about this battle comes down to the battle itself. Like we calculated in the Captain America shield versus a lightsaber video, eventually a lightsaber will make it through even amazing Marvel medals. The winner of this battle will come down to which hero knows how to use their weapon most effectively. So, could a lightsaber cut through adamantium? That depends on how the showdown goes down. If Wolverine took on a Jedi, he could probably take repeated slashes and strikes from a lightsaber, but if he kept in contact with that plasma tana, even for just a second, the more civilized weapon would go right through. I know you probably wanted a more definitive answer than, it depends, but doesn't it kind of make sense that either weapon could win out if used most effectively? I think so. Now go tell the forums what really happens, because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like this one and on Twitter and Instagram where I'm now putting special mini episodes of my show up like I did today. So again, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you there. I won't, I can't. I... Surprise lightsaber. I know a lot of people in the comments are gonna be saying, wait, Adamantium is indestructible though. It can't melt again after it's set. Okay, fine. Do you know what still happens? Heat transfer. We know that adamantium can be heated up from films and comic books, so if a lightsaber even touched an indestructible adamantium claw, heat would eventually transfer throughout Wolverine's entire skeleton and his skin would boil off from the inside out. So a lightsaber still wins. Funny how that happens.